62, American. Lucky Strike, first again with Tobacco Men. More independent tobacco experts smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. A recent impartial survey reveals this overwhelming smoking preference of the men who really know tobacco, the independent auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen. Remember, at market after market, these experts can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. And they, for their own personal smoking enjoyment, choose Lucky Strike. So light up a Lucky yourself, and puff by puff, you'll see. L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, and this fine Lucky Strike tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. Yes, you'll like Lucky Strike. <laughs> The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is usually our custom to take you to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills. But at the moment, Jack is taking a bath, so we'll take you to Mary Livingston's house instead. Oh, Pauline. Yes, Miss Livingston? Uh, you can have the rest of the evening off. I have a date tonight. We may go to a movie. Oh, that's nice. Or we may go to a nightclub. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm going with Mr. Benny. Oh. <laughs> I know what you mean, Pauline, but I haven't been out with Mr. Benny since we got back from Europe. Gee, I'll bet your trip to England would have been a complete fizzle if it hadn't been for... Still Harris. <laughs> <laughs> you still have a crush on Phil, haven't you, Pauline? Uh-huh. Did you get to act with Mr. Harris at the Palladium? Yes, we did one sketch together, and at the end of the scene, he kissed me. Oh, tell me, Miss Livingston. What's it like when Phil Harris kisses you? Uh, it's like being slapped in the face with a bar rag. <laughs> May I speak to Miss Livingston, please? This is Barbara Stanwyck. Just a minute, please. Miss Livingston, it's Miss Stanwyck. Oh, thank you, Pauline. Hello, Barbara. Hello, Mary. I called you because Bob has a conference at the studio tonight, and I'm having a few girls over for bridge. Would you like to join us? Oh, I'd love to, Barbara. But I promised Jack I'd go out with him tonight. Oh, then you're going to see my picture. Sorry, wrong number. Well, how do you know? Jack just called me for passes. <laughs> <laughs> passes? Yes, and tomorrow night, Jack's taking you to see Loves of Carmen. Well, what makes you so sure? He asked me for Rita Hayworth's phone number. <laughs> oh. No wonder I've never seen any of Lassie's pictures. She hasn't got a phone. <laughs> anyway, Barbara, you shouldn't have given Jack those passes. Well, I was going to turn him down, but when he came over to pick them up, he said he'd tell a joke on his program, plugging my picture. Oh, fine. Did he tell you the joke? Yes. It was a dilly about two termites who get indigestion from eating bad wood. Sorry, wrong lumber. <laughs> If he tells that gag in the program, I'll punch him right in the nose. I already did. <laughs> you know, Mary, Jack can be so corny. I can't understand why you go out with him all the time. Oh, he isn't so bad, Barbara. I'll, I'll admit Jack may not be the handsomest man in the world, but he's not the homeliest. Well, no. He may not be the wittiest, but he's not the dullest. No, I guess not. And he may not be the most generous, but... Shall we dance? <laughs> Anyway, Barbara, Jack isn't so bad. No, I guess you're right, Mary. He did bring Bob a nice present from Paris. A beautiful, bright yellow beret. 
A yellow beret? Yeah, Bob wore it yesterday at the studio. Oh, I bet it was a riot. No, but it started one. <laughs> what happened? Phone or no phone, Lassie chased him up a tree. <laughs> well, imagine giving Bob a beret. Say, Barbara, did Jack bring you anything from Europe? No, but I'm awfully glad he's back. You are? Nobody can do rough dry like he does. <laughs> Well, you can thank me, too. I help on my days off. Well, I'm sorry you can't come over tonight, Mary, but I hope you like my picture. Oh, I'm sure I will. And maybe we can get together next week. Goodbye, Barbara. Bye. Well, I'm all ready to go to the movies. Hand me on my umbrella, will you, Pauline? Miss Livingston, it stopped raining. I know, but you've never sat next to Mr. Benny when he's eating popcorn. <laughs> well, he should be here in a few minutes. <laughs> Here's your dessert, Mr. Benny. Ah, strawberry shortcake with whipped cream. You better eat it fast or you'll be late for the movies. I know, I know. Roxas, look at me. Do you think I need a shave? Well, yes and no. What do you mean, yes and no? After the movies, if you take Miss Livingston home, by the way, at Wiltshire Boulevard, no. Griffith Park, yes. <laughs> I'm not going by way of Griffith Park. My car's too old for that. <laughs> well... <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm almost through, I'm almost through eating. Say, boss, before you leave, I better put a patch over that slow leak in your rubber cushion. Why? Last time you went to the movies, you kept sinking lower and lower, and Miss Livingston thought you were unhappy with the picture. Oh, yeah, well, put a piece of adhesive on the leak or some scotch tape. I mean, fix it up any old way. Any old way? <laughs> Rochester. Rochester, that echo again. Didn't you hear it? No, boss, I didn't hear a thing. That's funny. I wonder if I'm just imagining it. Oh, well. Here's the plate, Rochester. I finished my dessert. Just a minute, boss. Let me look at you again. Yeah, I'll go get the razor and shave you. Shave me? Yeah, you've got so much whipped cream on your face, it'd be a shame just to wipe it off. <laughs> Never mind, I'll use my napkin. Now, lay out a suit for me, will you, Rochester? Okay. Oh, by the way, Mr. Benny, Dennis Day came over a little while ago and he said he wanted to see you. Oh, well, why didn't you tell me? Dennis! Dennis! Here I am, Mr. Benny. Oh. <laughs> ah, hello, kid. Hello. Say, Mr. Benny, I don't know why people rave so much about television. What programs? Fair. I've been sitting here watching it for three hours and all they've shown is that ocean picture. All you can see is the waves splashing up against the screen. Dennis, you're looking at the Bendix. <laughs> the television's in the other room. Now, what, uh, what did you want to see me about? Well, my mother had to go to a club meeting, and she won't be back till late, so she told me to come over here so I won't get into mischief. Mischief? Dennis, you're old enough to take care of yourself. No, I'm not. Last week, when my mother left me alone, it was terrible. What? I was sitting there getting bored. I wanted some excitement, so I stuck my head in the mixmaster. <laughs> you stuck your head in the mixmaster? That's the craziest thing I've ever heard of. If you've never tried it, don't knock it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Look, kid, from what you told me, I'm not going to leave you alone in my house either. Now, you better come with Mary and me. We're going to see Sorry, Wrong Number. With Barbara Stanwyck? <laughs> Dennis. I don't blame you, though. She, she's a wonderful actress. I don't know, she's so realistic. You know, so vibrant. So, so... So, Leone. <laughs> Dennis. Dennis, you heard that echo, didn't you? No. Do you still keep hearing it, Mr. Benny? Yes, and I don't know how to get rid of it. I don't know what to do. Why don't you stick your head in the mix, Master? <laughs> oh, stop. Now, Dennis, while I'm changing my clothes, run, run over the song you're going to do on the program, will you? Okay.
be sorry that the shadows are gone. This is the moment love has begun. Maybe there's danger, but that might be fun. I used to say if the right one came my way, I'm all dressed, Dennis. Come on, we'll pick up Mary and go to the movies. Well, kids, here we are at the theater. Come on, Dennis. Uh-oh. What's the matter, Jack? See, there are three of us, and I've only got two passes. Hmm. <laughs> now, uh, let me see. Shall I kill myself? <laughs> no! I'll figure out something. Jack, you ought to be ashamed of yourself asking Barbara Stanwyck for passes. Oh, I don't know, Mary. I gave her passes to my picture. For your picture, they were dropping tickets from airplanes. <laughs> I didn't mind the tickets, but I got hit on the head with a dish. Uh, <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> well, I'll go over and buy Dennis's ticket. Uh, wait here for me. Gee, Dennis, you'll love Sorry Wrong Number. It's so Tense and exciting. It is? Yeah. All through the picture, Barbara Stanwyck tries to use the telephone. And by accident, the wires get crossed and she hears two men plotting her own murder. Gee. Well, come on, let's go. I got your ticket, Dennis. And Dennis, as we go in, hold my hand and call me Daddy. <laughs> come on. Tickets, please. Here you are. Jack, I want to sit in the loges. Loges? These passes are for general admission. The loges will be an extra 60 cents. Oh. Well. Daddy, get your hand out of my pocket. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. How much did you say that was, mister? Oh, I gave it to him already. Oh. Well, let's go in. Imagine a big star like Barbara Stanwyck couldn't get me low seats. <laughs> Come on. Man. Hot dog, scorecard, penance, get your football penance here. We have both teams, UCLA and Stanford penance. Wait a minute, bud. This is a theater. What's the idea of selling football penance? For the newsreel. Penance, get your penance here. Hot dog, scorecards, cushions, soft cushions. Oh, you brought your own, huh, bud? <laughs> yeah. Come on, Jack. Immediate seating, third aisle to your right, please. Come on, kids, this aisle to the right, right here. Here, I'll open the door, Mary. Gosh, the picture started already. Yeah, here are three seats over here. Get in, Dennis. Operator! 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 Oh, what's the matter with this phone anyway? Operator, please, please, can't you hear me? I must get my husband's office. Operator! Operator, why can't I get the operator? She can't even get loge seats. <laughs> Quiet. trying to get Murray Hill 3, 5097 for the last half hour, and the line is always busy. Will you ring it for me, please? One moment, please. It's my husband's office. He should have been home hours ago, and I don't know what's keeping him or why that ridiculous line should be busy. 
ringing Murray Hill 35097. That line is busy. Busy, busy, busy. That's all I've been getting. It can't be busy. They've got a switchboard there. Why doesn't somebody answer? Why? Why? Gosh, isn't Barbara wonderful? Yeah, she's beautiful, too. You ought to see her husband in a yellow beret. <laughs> Damn it. Operator, operator, try that number again, please. Murray Hill 35097. Just a moment, please. Ringing Murray Hill 35097. Oh, my God, it's ringing. It's ringing. Hello? Hello, Mr. Stevenson, please. Hello. I want to talk to Mr. Henry Stevenson, please. Hello. Hello, George, speaking. Who is this? What number have I got? It's all set, George, just like we planned it, and we do it tonight. That's good. I'm ready, and the coast is clear. Oh, those men, what are they talking about? I must have the wrong line. Get off the line, please. Get off the line. Hold that line. Damn it. <laughs> Dennis, put down that pennant. The, the newsreel isn't on yet. Jack, be quiet. Operator, operator, you cut me in on somebody else's conversation. I want Murray Hill 35097. Now, look, George, I don't want any slip up on this. Want me to use a gun? No, that's too noisy. Strangler. Operator! Operator! Number, please. Operator, listen to me. I just heard two men talking. They're plotting a murder. Operator, what's the matter with you? Now, remember, George, go in the back way, climb the fire escape, and take your time. Don't make any noise. Go up slowly, slowly, slowly. Slowly, slowly. <laughs> There it is again. That echo. Dennis, Mary, you heard it, didn't you? Shh. Jack, it's embarrassing. Now remember, George, from here on, it's up to you. See that she's dead by midnight. Okay, pal. Leave it to me. Operator! Operator, there isn't much time. Listen to me. I'm trying to get Murray Hill 3509. Oh, never mind that. Now get me the police. Look, Operator, I'm an invalid, and I've just had a terrible shock tonight on the telephone. I'm very anxious to trace a call. It's about a murder. A terrible cold-blooded murder of a poor innocent woman tonight. Tonight. You've got to hurry. They're going to do it before 12 o'clock. Get me the police. Get me the police. that was. Yeah, I thought it was very good. Oh, and what a finish when she found out those two men on the telephone were actually plotting her murder. Yeah, but that's the only part, Mary, that wasn't believable. Imagine the coincidence of just picking up the phone and hearing two men plotting your own murder. I don't know. It was, it was too far-fetched. It was not. I agree with Daddy. <laughs> Dennis, you can stop calling me that now. Anyway, Mary, I, I must admit that I enjoyed watching the picture, but in real life, a thing like that couldn't happen. Oh, it couldn't, eh? Well, look after you last year when you were worried about your option, and you tried to get your sponsor, Mr. Riggio, on the phone. Look, Mary. What was it, Mary? What happened? I'll tell you what happened. It was last May, near the end of the season, and Jack was a nervous wreck. <laughs> Busy, busy, busy. It can't be busy all this time. <laughs> operator, operator. <laughs> Quiet, Polly. Operator, operator. I'm sorry, that line is busy. Listen, operator, I've been trying to get that number for the last 20 minutes. It's my sponsor's office. They have a switchboard there. I'm sorry, the line is busy. It can't be busy. I've been, I've been ringing that number since 25 after 11. Do you know what time it is now? Well, the correct Dial Ulrich, I know what time. Look, look, operator. I'm Jack Benny. I have a radio program. My option comes up at 12 o'clock today. If I don't hear from my sponsor, Mr. Riggio, in 15 minutes, I'll be out of a job. Now get me Hollywood. 7337. 7337. Quiet, Polly. <laughs> Polly, here's a cracker. And eat it slowly. It may be your last. <laughs> Operator. I'm ringing the number. Good. 
I know it can't be busy. I'm sure there must be something wrong with you. It's ringing. It's ringing. Hello? 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 Is that you, Mr. Riggio? Mr. Riggio? That's my sponsor. Mr. Riggio, this is me, Jack Benny. Hello, Frank. They can't hear me. The wires must be crossed. Well, Frank, I've given the matter a great deal of thought, and I've decided to let him go. Oh, I see. That's well, going to be quite a shock to him. He's been with us a long time. I know, Frank, but he's had it coming. His work has fallen off so badly, it isn't funny anymore. Yay! <laughs> They're talking about me. Mr. Riggio, operate! Well, Mr. Riggio, don't you think you ought to warn him and then give him another chance? Yeah, yeah. It might be difficult to replace him. That's right. Tell him, Frank, tell him. Nice boy, Frank. Nice boy, tell him. No, tell Frank, him. I've made up my mind. I think we should look for a younger man. Younger? Well, I'm only 39. <laughs> You, you didn't think I was old five years ago when I was 38. You, you've, got to, you've got to listen to me. So you, you don't think warning him would do any good, eh, Mr. Riggio? No, no, he's had his chance. Mr. Riggio, Mr. Riggio, please. Frank had a swell idea. Warn me. Give me another chance. I'm, I might be difficult to replace. Mel Blanc has five shows. So he couldn't even try well, to... Well, all right, Mr. Riggio. It isn't going to be easy, but I'll tell him. I've been cut off. Operator! 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 Number, please. Operator, I want Hollywood, 7337. Will you please get it for me? You may dial that number direct. But I've been dialing all morning. My finger is so swollen it won't fit in the hole. <laughs> five minutes ago, if I could only talk to Mr. Riggio, if I could plead with him, beg him, like I did last year. <laughs> Maybe I could talk him into giving me another... Sorry, that line is busy. Busy, busy, busy! What am I going to do? I got to think fast. Hmm, it's four minutes to twelve. Wait a minute, I know. I'll call my agent. That's it, my agent. Why am I paying him nine percent? <laughs> <laughs> I'll try it. I'll try it. That might, that might be Mr. Riggio. Oh, hello? Hello, is that you, Edna? <laughs> Edna? This is Johnny McGuire. I just got off my ship. Haven't seen a woman in three years. You're the first one I called. You, you must have the wrong number. Ah, uh, don't give me that, Edna. I recognize your voice right away. <laughs> but, but I... Come on, Edna. Let you and me step out tonight. I'll buy you a nice big dinner. I'm telling you, you have the wrong... Dinner? <laughs> no, no, what am I thinking of? No. Then he'd walk... I'm sorry, you have the wrong number. <laughs> I, wish... I wish I were. I wish I were, Edna. At least then I'd know... Oh, my goodness. Only three minutes to 12. No time to call my agent now. I gotta get Mr. Riggio. Maybe he hasn't signed anybody else yet. I'll tell him I'll do anything he asks me, anything. I'll let him cut my salary. This year, I'll suggest it myself. <laughs> Why not? The line's clear, it's not busy. I still have time. This is Hollywood, 7337. Get me, get me Mr. Riggio, quick. This is Jack Benton. Mr. Riggio is busy on another line. Will you call back? No, 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 I'll hold on. I've only got three minutes. Hello? Hello? Hello, hello? Is that you, Mr. Riggio? <laughs> oh, it's you, pal. <laughs> Shut your big mouth. Hello, what's that? Mr. Riggio. Mr. Riggio, I wasn't talking to you. It was my parrot. This is Jack Benny. Hello again. Hello again. Oh, well, Jack, I'm glad you called. I want to talk Mr. to Mr. Riggio, you. please. Before you say anything, listen to me. You got to hear my side of it. I know I've been on the air a long time, but I'm not true yet. Honest, I'm not. There's still a few good years left in me, and I want you to have them. But Jack. L-A-S-M-F-T. L-A-S-M-F-T. But Jack. Let me try Jack. Jack. To tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Yeah. They're first again with tobacco men. What? La 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 la. <laughs> la 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 la. Yeah. la, la. What's the la, matter la, with you? La, la. Look, I know I've made mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. I mean, everybody but you, Mr. Riggio. Mr. Riggio. And I've done everything you've asked me to. Last year, I kept my eye on the red bullseye till it was bloodshot. <laughs> Mr. Riggio. Mr. Riggio, you've got to listen to me. Jack, what are you so upset about? We have no intention of letting you go. But you don't understand, Mr. <laughs> what? You mean... You mean you're going to pick up my option? Why, 
Suddenly, I've been trying to call you all morning. Your phone's been busy. <laughs> My phone busy? Oh. Oh. Tell me, Jack. Whatever gave you the idea, we wouldn't take up your option. Well, well, Mr. Riggio, I, I called you a few minutes ago, and the, the wires got crossed. Yeah, I heard you talking to a man named Frank. Frank? Oh, yes, he's my office manager. Well, I, I overheard you telling him to let somebody go, that you, that you didn't want him anymore. Oh, yes, yes. We had to discharge him. He was a bookkeeper. Very incompetent. The bookkeeper? Oh. <laughs> The, the bookkeeper. Well, well, Mr. Riggio, if the, the man wasn't doing his work, what else could you do? I mean, it's not your fault he isn't capable. There's no place for sentiment in business. That's what I like about you, Mr. Riggio. You don't let your heart rule your head. That bookkeeper got what was coming to him. I don't believe in a man whining and trying to hang on to a job when he's not wanted. I agree with you. If a man fails to deliver, let him go. Get rid of him, I say. Fire! Ladies and gentlemen, travel on our highways is increasing. It is now 11% above pre-war peak. So when traveling, obey the law. Don't take a chance and be careful. The life you save may be your own. Jack will be back in just a moment, but first... It is 60 dollars. A recent impartial survey covering all the southern tobacco markets reveals Lucky Strike. First again with tobacco men. Yes, more independent tobacco experts smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. Excuse me, but who are these tobacco experts? They're the men who really know tobacco, the independent auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen. And it's important for you to know that more of these independent tobacco experts smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. You've heard the survey results. Now, hear what Mr. Charles L. Belvin, independent tobacco buyer, who's attended more than 2,000 tobacco auctions recently said. Season after season, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy good, ripe, mild tobacco, fine tobacco that makes one swell smoke. I've smoked Lucky 16 years. A Lucky Strike smoker for 16 years. And remember, Mr. Belvin, like you, looks to the cigarette he smokes for enjoyment. Real, deep down, smoking enjoyment. So light up a Lucky yourself, and puff by puff, you'll see. L-S-M-F-T. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, and this fine Lucky Strike tobacco means a really enjoyable smoke for you. Yes, you'll like Lucky Strike. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> stay tuned in for the Phil Harris Alice Faye show, which follows immediately. And on Saturday, be sure to listen to A Day in the Life of Dennis Day. I want to thank Miss Barbara Stanwyck for being with us on the program tonight and for the passes. And, uh... <laughs> and, uh... And Rita, I couldn't get you on the phone, so send three, please. <laughs> Now, to my friends in San Francisco, I'll be seeing you at the Opera House on Friday, October 22nd at the Friars Frolic for the Variety Club Benefit. Are you going to San Francisco, eh, Jack? Uh-huh. Oh. You going to go by plane? By plane? Well, no. Oh, no. then you're going on the train. The train? No. No, no, no. Oh, then you're going to drive your car. No. No, you see, I made a deal with a fellow who's going that way. <laughs> Oh, you're going to share expenses. You no, know, all I have to do is help him unload the oranges. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.